Boys, I will not be pulling for a Bibber Lune unless Brax can convince me. Best DPS in the game. Yeah, but do I really need that? Do I really need that? I mean, I already have my Kafka. I already have my Zila. I mean, I have a hook at E3. Do I really need a Bibber Lune? I doubt it. The new cooler Don Hung How has arrived. How good can he be? And he's confirmed just one thing. With alternate versions of already playable characters, Honkai Star Rail is like Honkai Impact 3rd. Yep. Meaning we will also all end up sobbing our eyes out in about five more patches. <laughs> Don yep. Hung Hung is also Hoyoverse's way of politely turning you on because after Kafka, we could all use something a little more subtle. This man both opens the floodgates and parts the seas. Today, I'm going to be going over the new imaginary Daniel Hung. And don't worry, he's also very real. Yeah, Don hung at the Star Trek convention. Okay, it's just imaginary element. If you enjoy videos like this, let me know in the comments and consider subscribing. We're only 98,200. You want to know why I don't trust any of these people talking about Don Hung right now? Because the 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 least amount of damage I've seen Don Hung do in a video and on stream was 900,000 damage. And then I trialed him for the trial and the most I could do is 70. So something's not really adding up here, guys. 74 subscribers away from 300k and i'm pretty sure we can get there by like tomorrow with all that being said let's talk about don hung right okay. after i read this ad this video is sponsored by guild wars 2 guild wars 2 i love that game holy dude brax's videos are nice but i've never seen one before Danny Hung is a tank, not because he has a what? decent health pool, but because he hits like a K2 Black Panther. He has oh, okay. a skill that enhances his basic attack, but absorbs skill points to use. His basic attack deals low damage without enhancements, okay damage with one point, pretty solid damage with two points, and absolutely decimates planets with three. He also gets a pretty big crit damage buff whenever using two or three skill points, because for every hit starting at four, he'll get one stack of crit damage that lasts Jesus until the end of his Christ. turn. And the more skill points you use, the more hits he's gonna do when you play as skill points almost every single time or every time if possible but with that said if you don't have perfect teams then you may need to use less skill points in a turn every now and then just guys can we stop can we stop cooming over the emotes in chat can we stop i'm glad these aren't showing in the chat and the only way you can see these emotes are at twitch.tv forward slash tech down guys you're destroyed I, I can't even focus on the video guys to make sure that you can actually play the video game you need to live this dude eats a ton of skill points and that means your team building is going to matter a lot to max his damage output but his yep. ultimate helps a bit because after using it you gain two stacks of sagma synchro santa which can substitute for skill points kwama sacrilege city caps out at three but you'll basically never hit that unless you stop spending all your money on doordash and get e2 oh and also his ultimate does a lot of damage i feel like that's probably pretty important to include his ultimate also costs 140 which is actually absurdly high but every time you enhance your basic attack you're actually getting more energy out of it with one point giving 30 two points giving 35 and is there any reason to not just hit three every single time? I don't understand. Like, I don't even know why it's even a choice. Just make the ability cost three and then blow them the fuck up. Three points giving 40. But it's still cool for the pageantry. You're dealing more hits of damage, seeing the best animation in the game, and activating his talent, which gives him a stack of damage bonus every single hit he deals on a turn. Jesus! Up to a max six the main thing to remember about this is that if you can get his ultimate at the end of an attack, make sure to use it before his turn actually ends, so that way you can keep the damage bonus on it. Unless you get E2, and then you skip forward to the new dimension. Everything is for free. Like, bro, I, I, I cannot imagine playing Honkai Star Wars as a whale. There is absolutely no way to f*** anything up. Like, you just ult, and then, good God, these emotes, guys. These emotes are crazy. You know what? Let's just keep watching a bit of the His traces are pretty nuts as well. One of them gives 24 crit damage. That is crit damage, not crit rate. I don't know why that's written up there. Against enemies that... Wait, what? This character's crit rate increases by 24% when dealing damage to enemy with imaginary weakness. Are you sure that's not just crit rate? Damage. That is crit damage, not crit rate. I don't know why that's written up there. Against enemies that are weak to imaginary damage. And by playing him with Silver Wolf, you can have that for absolutely free. His other passive gives they... him crowd control resistance, and the it's third typo? one gives him 50... If that's a typo, where the my free Apollo gems. Where are my Apollo jades? Teen energy at the start of combat. His technique outside of battle gives him a stack of Santa Scramble Lambda 2, so I guess you actually can keep spending on DoorDash. When you end up leveling his talents, it's important to remember that you are loved and that someone cares very much about you. It's me. I do that. Focus on his basic attacks for the highest portion of his damage, then his ultimate and talent together, Makes and then sense. his skill. Cooler Don Hung is basically the Star Rail equivalent of Exodia. Once you have him, no. you win the game. But you need all five is pieces to make really him work. Is he really that busted? And relics, light cones, and teams. So let's talk about relics next. 
Surely not. Dunhung is absurdly hard to build if you're bad at reading, sleep deprived, or a tower of fantasy player. But I'm gonna break. <laughs> oh, 32 goes is not gonna like that, buddy. That is strike one, buddy. That is strike one. You just pissed off the entire tower of fantasy community. All six players, big guy. They are going to be at your doorstep, Braxophone. Break it all down so you can get some crazy damage out of him. To be clear, Genji is a high investment character because you have to invest in your team, not necessarily invest in him. You'll need to give him some good gear, but to be able to manage his skill points, at least at release, you'll need to make your team fast and him slow. Unless you're using another very specific team. I'll talk about his teammates. Okay, that's not, okay, that's not true. So you need to make his team faster than him. And Bibberlune should still be fast. So your team should be like 137 speed, 136 speed, 135 speed, then he should be 134. Team section, but for him, you want to run Wastelander of Bandage Tree Desert, which gives imaginary damage for the two piece and a pretty massive crit bonus for the four piece. If you play the. You will run out of skill points. Oh, you actually want him slow as. No, actually, slow Dan is better. I have heard the complete opposite. You keep him slow and stack attack. Attack boots slow as f Yeah, he does more damage. And that's better than just genning skill points for himself? So you actually... I don't know, man. We're, we're, we're going to see what... Uh, we're going to see what people say after longer than one day of release. We'll see. The other Hoyaverse game that's underwater now, the set is Blizzard Strayer. When enemies are imprisoned, you have bonus crit stats against them. You can also run two-piece Wild Wheat with this set for attack, or even four-piece for some basic attack damage bonus, but I recommend Wastelander more since it has the highest damage potential. For planar sets, you basically want Rudolin Arena and... That's it. If you play speed boots or have over 120 speed, space healing station can be pretty good as well. But for what I'm going to recommend, Rudolin Arena is way too hard to beat. Crit rate and basic attack damage bonus are crazy. For main stats, you want to run a crit damage body, attack percent boots, imaginary damage sphere, and okay. an attack percent rope. Between the wastelanders... And why wouldn't you want to just run energy regen rope? Because a, a quick... A quick Imbibitor Lune with an energy regen rope sounds sick. Am I nuts? DPS loss? Yeah, but imagine how many times you can ult. You can ult so much faster. He gets so much energy, he doesn't need it. Is this character actually that much different than people are thinking? ER rope doesn't get you ult faster. Why would ER rope not get you ult faster? You can run ER rope if you want it. Okay, coach stat. If you don't have LC, ER is the way. He needs his basic attack. No, I get that. His attack sucks against non-imaginary enemies. I don't know if that's true. Tectone Gotcha Smack will make that build. Yeah, I feel like fast, faster and Bibber Lune with energy recharge. I feel like that's got to be a build, but I guess we'll see. Set for 10%, Rudolin Arena for 8%, base 5%, and his minor traces for 12%. Like, let's say that it is suboptimal. I feel like it's it's surely still viable. And crit rate, you already have 35% crit rate for free without right. Light Cone. So most of the time, you want a crit damage body after other bonuses. But with that said, crit rate can also be pretty usable. Either way, you just want to make sure that you're over 70% total and under 90% crit rate. Unless you're not... Bro, my zeal is above 70% and that bitch never, she never crits. She literally never crits. Using four piece wastelander, then you can go to 100. For boots, I found that I like playing him with attack percent boots because I speed tune him in a very specific way and he hits pretty hard. But speed can be okay depending on the team. Both are good there overall, go. but generally I recommend attack more because he eats a lot of skill points and a lower speed allows you to generate more skill points from your fast supports before his next attack. Imaginary sphere is best, but that attack makes percent. sense. You know, if, if, if you run Dan or uh, Dan ill super slow and then your team can go twice three times before he goes once i mean shit i mean i guess i get it it's decent and honestly see what we need is is we need a unit that can give us skill points that's what we need we need somebody who like alts and and like gives us like four skill points that would be nuts not too much worse with good substats and for rope attack percent always gets you higher damage overall even with the extra ultimates and the er rope also accounts for the extra skill points you're effectively getting from it i'll go into more detail on team builds later on but here's a summary of my donhung build keep in mind if we see other relic sets or characters come to the game in the future this can change but this is my build Okay. Well, let's see what yours can do, Brax. You sure do know a lot for the character coming out two seconds ago. And you sure did edit this video pretty high quality. It's like these content creators have access to a server that lets them play for early when I f***ing don't. And that's a f***ing tragedy. Why the f***?
Am I the biggest Honkai Star Rail creator and I don't have access to this server? Am I nuts? Like, I feel like I'm losing my mind here, guys. My theory crafter friend who did a lot of stuff for this video is dyslexic. So when I messaged him that I was in Daniel, he thought I said I was in denial. And that's also true because I really can't believe that you have actually decent free to play options for this character, but I also can't believe they released a light cone for him that feels so busted. Dunung's signature light cone is pretty insane on him because it opens up entirely new play styles, increases his damage output by a ton, and looks really good. The energy regen from it is really solid, and in some teams, it can actually make a massive difference in just overall play. Every life going is so busted, bro. And I'm never, I'm never going to pull for it. I am never, ever, 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 ever going to pull for it. No way. Playability. That doesn't mean you need it, but I will say from experience, he felt a lot better with his signature light code. Yeah, I wonder why. What character doesn't feel better with their light code? Uh do not pull for light cones, guys. Do not pull for light cones. You do not need to do it. It's so it's so boring. Get yourself the free characters. Don't pull for light cones. It's it's whale bait. It's whale bait, guys. It's whale bait. You don't need it. But don't spend money on this game. Thank you. G light cone is pretty solid too, and that's gonna be his next best option overall. But there's no need to get it for him because on the fall of an Aeon is the next best thing at S5, and yep. since it's free, it's uh free nowhere yep. to run at s5 is a decent option for him but honestly we're not even far enough into the game to have s5 and it's just barely better than s1 something irreplaceable a secret vow is also pretty strong and the moles welcome you should be your holy worst case shit scenario. it's the so flexible it, you either go broke for brighter than the sun or ask the weird puppet lady for a freebie and max it out as always here's a light cone ranking and chart so you can compare the damage take it with a pretty big grain of salt since everything is simulated but it's a good general look at each light cone's power level on it personally i do feel that Dunhung is a pretty free-to-play friendly unit with high investment just due to fall of an aeon being so strong on him and his team requirements but he's made much easier by spending i'm not spending i'm sorry in advance for the team section you're about to watch because there's going to be a lot of information in there but it is good information if this is your favorite character because there's a lot of ways to play him yeah, either right click three times or don't right click three times. It's a lot of flexibility. Guys, guys, listen. Listen, don't pull this unit. I know he's broken, but if you need to save money, please don't go into financial debt for this character. I know he's OP, guys. I I know he's OP, but we we really, really, really don't need to pull for him. We don't. I'm not gatekeeping. I'm just trying to remind people to be financially responsible. Super Saiyan Cold Dragon Young teams are flexible if you don't care about doing damage. Realistically, there are lots of supports you can play with Downhung if you're willing to sacrifice your level 3 enhanced basic attack to save skill points, but that's basically always going to be lower damage than using supports that can break you even. But regardless, I want to give you a general idea of who you can play with, and then I'll give you a couple optimized options. Generally speaking, because he's so saturated with attack and damage bonus, yep. defense shredders are amazing to play with him. The obvious- Yeah, just get a Silver Wolf. Every video. Oh, it's every video, bro. Oh, just get a Silver Wolf. I know. I know. I know. Just time for a bug. 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 The choice for that is Silver Wolf, since you can gain imaginary weakness on enemies while also shredding <sighs> defense. You can also play them with Fox Mother and Lulcha to make sure that your team always has a chance to break. Despite Yukong feeling pretty bad to play without E6, you still can make her work without it. Alternatively, though, you can play a team with Pela, which is a really good free to play friendly option since she's a four star that has AoE defense shred and Danny has AoE damage that gets extra value with Pela's kit. Alongside Pela, you can also play Ting Yun, and she has an exciting twist. She'll give you some attack buffs and skill point <laughs> generation, but she also can help you save extra skill yeah. points. Fine. character energy, which will let you ult more often on Don Hung. For basically all of Don Hung's teams, the preservation and abundance characters don't really matter much as long as the element fits the fight and they don't good consume one. a lot of skill points. That's why Locha is so powerful. Sometimes I also like to combine Pela and Silver Wolf for extra high defense shred, and this team is especially good if you're using Ting Yun and- Yeah, let me just get a Silver Wolf. 
Guys, I'm I'm pretty sure I'm depressed. Okay, I'm I'm gonna just go and say it, guys. I'm pretty sure I have a mental illness, guys. I'll just say it. Other teams with other carries. Basically, if you have limited resources, this one's pretty solid. <laughs> Lastly, I wanted to give a shout out to my boy Welt because in this setup, he actually doesn't need to use a ton of skill points. Yeah, I just use Silver Wolf and Welt. You should have just pulled Silver Wolf, Dicky. Why couldn't you just put your thing out of the side, Dicky? And if you too need a nice huggable pillow to scream in while you lose the 50-50, feel free to go to Tectone.store and order yourself an Eggy Plush today. September 13th, they go away forever. So feel free to get yourself your own stress management little egg friend. Thanks, guys. You just want his ultimate. The relic set you use on Don Hung for crit rate and damage on imprisoned enemies can actually activate with Welts in prison from ultimate, and he can help enable Dragon Man to do big imaginary damage. I believe Don Hung will work extremely well with Fushuan and Lynx, but we don't have them yet, so you know. Here's where it all gets complicated though. I mentioned earlier in the video that Don Hung wants to be slow and his team's fast. Well, that's how I play him, and yeah. it's honestly pretty broken. I like to call yeah. him a destruction unit that destroys your team's damage in exchange for being able to destroy enemies, but it requires a lot of speed. Every single one of my supports on these Don Hung teams has at least 147 speed or higher in order to generate enough skill points to make Don Hung able to use three skill points. 169? Maximize his damage without needing his light cone or Branya. With his speed kept low and all allies at 147 speed or above, you can generate enough SP and more to use your support skills as well as Don Hung optimally. In fact, with Lucha, you can even go to 134 speed just because he almost never uses his skill. Basically, just live fast and eat up. If you want to be safe, I recommend 147 speed for 11 turns in 7 cycles to generate skill points. But you can go faster or slower depending on your situation. 147 speed on all of my teammates? That's faster than any character I have on my whole account. Yeah, man. <laughs> I don't think... If I had builds like that, I wouldn't need new characters. I could already beat everything in the game. Guys, you don't need a Bibbler Lune. You don't need them. Okay, it's fine. If you already have builds as good, you've already beaten the game. You don't need him. Like I said before, option one is to destroy your supports builds to make Don Hunt stronger, and it's good for free-to-play players. Option two, though, is just to have a better account. When I was talking about- stop this. I can't. I can't do it. Grim, full credit to him for this, by the way. Check out his channel. He mentioned Bronya as a busted support for Don Hung. It seems odd because that's a surefire way to lose a ton of skill points, but if you have Don Hung's signature light cone that gives some energy regen, as well as Bronya, you can speed tune supports to be around 136 speed or higher, Don Hung to be around 135, and Bronya to be at 134. Basically, what this does is let you set up for Don Hung and generate skill points, then use Don Hung's zero skill point basic attack to generate another point, burn that point with Bronya's skill right after, then get a Bronya buffed three skill points point basic attack. That old sequence will get you 60 energy for Don Hung, and when combined with his ultimate and his light cone, you'll be able to ult every two times you execute that combo, making you go positive on skill points while also having a giga buffed Don Hung. This yeah, I should just get a better account. You're right. I should just get one. Oh, Brax, I'm gonna fight you, bro. I'm gonna fight you, Brax. I should have taken you out when I had the chance, bro. This whale guy is making me upset, bro. I'm getting pissed off, guys. Jesus. This combo is actually pretty crazy if you have access to his light cone and Branya, and it's definitely worth a shot for higher end content. There's also the giga budget version of this where you run an energy regen rope instead of using his signature light cone, but generally that damage is gonna be pretty low by comparison. And also imagine having energy regen ropes. The Branya strategy- ah! Oh, you bitch! God, he's right! Oh God, bro! I hate this guy. You're right. Yeah, you're right. At least from my testing, didn't end up yeah. being stronger than the 147 speed strategy, but both are viable and very strong until we get a support in the game that gives skill points. Also, do keep in mind that testing things depends on content, and either one of these strategies could be exceptional in different content. With all that said about the Bronya, guys, this is a free-to-play guide. All you need is Bronya and Silver Wolf, and minimum 169 speed on every other unit in the team. Okay, it's free-to-play, guys.
and the light gun. Trat, building supports with absurdly high speed is a surefire way to get ridiculous damage while also being free to play friendly. Thanks for listening to literally the most dank team section I've ever done, and let's move on to Eidolons because some of you are too down bad and I'm worried. Don't, don't, don't. You don't need Eidolons. You don't need Eidolons. Five star Eidolons Since are overkill, guys. you swiped on Dragon Guy, you should try Dragon D's no Eidolons are never worth spending money on, in my opinion, but... Oh, Brax, I love you for saying that. I love you for saying that. Holy shit. Thank you, brother. But I do want to let you know where the best stopping point is for value if you decide to upgrade your Daniel. E1 is going to increase his damage bonus cap from the stacks he gets on hit and also doubles the amount of stacks you get per hit. It buffs him a bit overall, but the big thing about it is that he can now reach max damage stacks with only his level 2 enhanced basic attack. You definitely want to avoid the 2 skill basic, but because this Eidolon helps with that and increases his damage overall, it's pretty solid. E2 what is John Hung's stopping point damage, for dolphins bro. because it's pretty dang strong and you're not going to see much better until E6. After using his ultimate, he God, actually gets looks three so stacks enhanced basic instead of two and gets his action moved forward by 100%. The E2 meaning is he so can attack busted. again with his level three basic attack for free right after ulting. That also means more energy back to him right after ultimate, which is crazy for getting ult sooner and getting more free attacks. E3 what is a skill in attack level up, which is pretty solid for him. And E4 is also another pretty decent buff since it lets the crit damage stacks from his skill persist what? until his and next. So it's that. just more crit damage overall, which is just a damage buff. E5 is an ultimate and talent level up. And E6 is a massive damage increase for Don Hung because it nukes. I, I, I mean, I don't really know what else to say. You know those crazy damage showcases on games like Genshin where players use Bennett, Kazuha, yeah. Mona, and then dish out like six bajillion damage? Yeah, that's what this is for. After using an ally ultimate, not including Don Hung, he gets 20% imaginary resistance penetration for his level three basic. It can stack up to three times. Three stacks? Level three basic can have up to 60% imaginary resistance penetration and absolutely demolish enemies. Here's a little chart showing the power increase for Don Hung based on Eidolons. And as you can see, Eidolon 2 is pretty dang good for him. But with that said, if you're debating between going for his Light Cone and his Eidolon 2, the Light Cone is going to cost you a lot less poles to actually get, and it's going to be usable on multiple other destruction characters in the future, as long as they don't scale on something like HP. No, stop that. Don't do it. Don't do it, guys. The free-to-play light cones, they're good enough, guys. Okay? They're good enough. Don't do it, guys. E2 is great, but I would recommend the light cone first, especially for the flexibility of team comp it provides. But it's not my money, so, you know, if you want to get E2, you can. Just know that E2 is actually insane. And it's where you should stop if you're just going for bang for your buck. With all that said, if you do have Blades light cone, you could also just go straight for E2 and have a pretty solid damage increase. But I don't feel that most people have Blades light cone. All in all, though, it seems like he takes a lot to be able to play effectively. He does. From my testing, he does feel pretty free to play friendly in terms of the damage output you get just for building the right teams. If you can invest into both Don Hung and the supports that you want to use with him equally, then you can make Don Hung one of the best damage dealers in the entire game and honestly probably the first instance of power creep on DPS, but you didn't. That's okay. Because guys, it'll be funny watching so many free to play players pull for him and realize that they can't make him work because their account's not good enough. And I look forward to knowing that I'll just not pull him and then get the satisfaction of watching other people's Don Hung ill suck balls it'll and everybody will be laughing at their don hungs because it's terrible i'm i'm skipping don hung i'm getting silver wolf again no i'm getting topaz and i'm getting fushuan i'm getting all of them we don't need dan hun ill it's fine okay free to play players will be sitting there auto attacking with no skill points there there's no way he's free to play from them there's no way there's just no way we did it. We made the video. Also, that was one of the best guide videos I've ever seen. That was incredible. That was actually a, a good mixture of, like, informative and fun and, like, good laughs. Uh, that was Braxophone. Uh, feel free to like and subscribe to that channel. That was incredible. Like, incredibly, incredibly, incredibly good video. I actually love Brax. Very good dude. Very good friend of mine. Please go check him out. That was dope. And aha, thank you for buying another Eggy Plus. Available till September 13th. Eggie Plush, yay! Techno.store, very cool. Thank you, guys. That was sick, and we resisted the urge to pull Dan Hung Hill. We will not be pulling. 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 We will not be pulling.